Okay, the first one we're going to do, in addition to the video notes, we've got x plus 3 over 5x minus 4x minus 2 over 6x. Can anyone tell what the common denominator is? We need an x for sure, and then what kind of number? 30. So the common denominator is 5 times 6, which is 30, and then we for sure need an x with each of those. Okay, so the first fraction has 5x. What does it need? A 6. Needs a 6. That's how it will become 30. The second fraction has a 6x. What does it need? 5. That's how it's going to become 30. Okay, so we have... What do we have for the first fraction? What do we have for the second fraction? 20x minus 10 over 30x. Oh, not 36. 30. Okay, and then at this point, we have 6x plus 18. And then what do I do since it's a subtraction problem? Subtract. Yeah, I'm going to subtract each of these. So minus 20x minus negative 10. What happens when you minus negative 10? You add 10. Okay. So all of that is divided by 30x. So what do we have? Yes. So negative 14x plus 28 divided by 30x. And what do I need to do before I simplify? Well, as part of simplifying. we got to get the negative out, right? So it's written as a fraction. It's already in decreasing order. The leading term is negative, and this is the step where we're factoring, right? And if the leading term is negative, we got to take out the negative. Um, and then what's the GCF? Because that's the type of factoring we're doing. So what's the GCF? Yeah, negative 14. So take out the negative 14 and what's left over? X minus 2. Good. Good catch. All right. Over 30X. And then can that be reduced? Can we reduce that? What can we do? Divide by 2, yeah. So if you divide by 2 with the 14, what do you get? 7. If you divide by 2 with the 30, what do you get? 15. Okay, so we'll say our final answer is negative 7 times x minus 2 over 15x. If you want to multiply the negative 7 back into the top, you can, and the answer is still correct. But I don't feel like multiplying again because I'm being lazy, so I'm just going to leave it like that.
All right, next example, we're going to do 2 over 3 minus 5x plus 5 over 3x minus 15. Here's our next example. How should I be thinking of this denominator over here? You can look at your notes from the weekend. How should I be thinking of this one? I don't know if we did one like this actually. We're going to think of this one as 3 times x minus 5. So I'm going to factor the denominator so I know what two things multiplied together to make that denominator. So I'm going to think of that as 3 times x minus 5. And then this denominator over here is just 3. I'm just going to think of it like a 3. So if I compare those two denominators, then what must be the common denominator? It for sure needs a 3. Okay, both of the denominators had a 3, so it for sure needs a 3. And then one of the denominators had an x minus 5, so it needs an x minus 5. So that's going to be our common denominator. So they both have a 3. This one has an x minus 5, so they both need the x minus 5. Okay, so what does the first fraction need? The x minus 5... What does the second fraction need? Nothing. It's got it all. Okay. So the first fraction is going to be I think I heard it very quietly. Awkward. 2x minus 10? Is that what you said? Hey Schaefer. Josh, will you will you tell the boys except for Gunner to stay outside? Tell Gunner to stay till the other two to come in. Stay outside? That Gunner can stay because he needs to take his notes, but they're all laughing and they shouldn't be. Gotcha. Will you tell the other two to come in? Um three times x minus five. And then we've got five x plus five. Three times x minus five. So at this point, we're ready to like write it like one fraction with a common denominator. So we got 3x minus 5 as the common denominator. And we've got 2x minus 10 for the first fraction. And then what do I do for the second fraction? So I minus and minus. So what should I be writing? Minus 5x minus Alright, and then what do I do next? Negative 3x minus 15. Oh, there's an x there. It's not 1. It's not 2. We're not making guesses. What's the next step? 
mathematically, what are we supposed to do next? Factor. factor. Yeah. So we're going to factor out the negative 3. And what happens when you factor out the negative 3? You get x plus 5 over 3x minus 5. What happens? Yeah, the threes cancel. Do the rest cancel? No, not unless you want to kill a puppy. Puppy killers back at that table. So we got negative x plus 5 over x minus 5. That's the final answer. Can't do anything else. Unless you want to say negative x minus 5 over x minus 5. But that's your final answer. You can't cancel anything else without killing a puppy. Don't be a puppy killer. Not worth it. Because you guys were trying to kill the puppy. It was, a, it was an accident? Yeah, how do you kill a puppy on accident? All right, here's the next one. Miss Rice, why are we only doing subtraction problems? Because those are the ones students mess up. Thanks for asking. <laughs> All right, what do we do first? So this is similar to the last problem. Find the common denominator. How are we supposed to look at this denominator? What do we have to do with it? We have to factor it because we want to see what the two denominators could have in common. So if we factor this, what do we do? 6x, GCF of 6x, and then what's left over? x minus 2. Okay. So between a 3 and a 6, what would you put in the common denominator? 6, okay. So that would make the numbers be in common. And then this one has a plain x. So the other one's going to need to have a plain x. And then this one has an x minus 2. So the other one's going to need to have an x minus 2 as well. So what do we need to multiply the first fraction by so that it will have the common denominator? Okay, so it needs a 2x to make the 6x and the front of the parentheses happen. And then it needs the x minus 2. Okay. So on the top, we have a 1 times a 2 times an x. 1 times 2 times x, and that is being distributed. So 1 times 2x is 2x, and then what do we get when we distribute it? <clears throat> 2x squared. Minus 4x. Does the second fraction need anything? No, nope, second fraction's good. And then what do I do? So we have 2x squared minus 4x, 
And then what should we write? Minus 3x plus 6. So we have 2x squared minus 7x plus 6. And what do we do with it at this point? Factor. What type of factoring is the top? Slide divide. My favorite. Is it your favorite? No, it's not. Oh, that's so sad. So we are looking for two things that multiply to 12 that add to negative 7. I'm going to go ahead and do the work over here. Multiply to 12, add to negative 7. 4 and 3. Should they just be 4 and 3, though? Negative, negative and negative. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's x minus 4, x minus 3, but we're not going to leave it that way. Divide by 2. So what are those factors? Okay, 2x minus 3, x minus 2. And then what happens? Yeah, the x minus 2s reduce. And then what do we get? Can we reduce the 3 and the 6? Not unless you want to kill a puppy. Gabe is such a puppy killer today. He keeps we keep being like, Gabe, do you want to kill a puppy? And he's like, yes, yes, I do. Every time, every time. He's like, yep, kill that puppy. Don't deserve to live. No, because we have kept you from killing all the puppies. You're like standing there with a knife with a crazy look on your face, and we're like, Gabe, no, Gabe, no, we're not doing it. I know, Gabe, what the heck? That's what we're asking. All right, x minus 4 over 4x squared plus 2x minus 3x over 2x. So, what do we do? And how do we find the common denominator? So we look at the first fraction, and what do we do with it? We factor it, and when you factor it, what do you get? 2x times two x plus one. Okay. So the common denominator would be what? We for sure need a two x, they both have that. And then what else do we need? The parentheses, the 2x plus 1. So the first fraction has the entire thing. What does the second fraction need? So 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. 
So the first fraction we said didn't need to change. What do we get for the second fraction? Say it again. Three x times this one, over two. Mm-hmm. So three x times two x, six x squared. Three x times one, three x. I'm just going to go ahead and write the first fraction, the x minus 4. And then what do I have after that? What should I do now? So if we go back to our simplifying notes, the simplifying notes say write it as a fraction. It is. Then the simplifying notes say write it in decreasing order. Is it in decreasing order? No. So what do we write first? Negative 6x squared. And then we have a negative 3x and a positive x, so negative 2x. And then we have a minus 4. And then the next step is we factor. And if we have a negative in the front, what, would we, what do we do with that negative? Take it out, like a GCF. So should we only take out the negative, or should we take out more than just a negative? Negative 2, all the numbers are even, so we're going to take out a negative 2. So negative 2 in the front... What does that leave us with? So divide out the negative 2, and what do we get? 3x squared plus x plus 2. How do we factor something like this? Slide divide. So if we go over here to do our slide divide, we are multiplying to a positive 6. Multiplying to a positive 6 and adding to a positive 1. Multiplying to a positive 6, adding to a positive 1. What do you notice? You can't. It's not possible. Okay, so thankfully that doesn't factor. That makes the problem a little bit easier because there's not a lot we can do with it. So that does not factor, but what can we simplify? Can anything cancel or are we just done? The twos. This two and this two can cancel out. It is, but it's two times x, and times and divide can cancel. That's why it's okay. So we've got a negative, and then we got 3x squared plus x plus 2. In the front, we got an x and a 2x plus 1. Nothing else can cancel because the parentheses are not identical. So we could say that is our final answer. If you want, you can distribute the negative back into the problem and say that's your final answer. But it's not necessary. All right, so in my opinion, this is the hardest part of the unit, is this right here. Okay, so 
it's not, they're not impossible. You just have to be careful. Do you guys notice there's a lot of different places we could make mistakes? Okay. So you're just, we're just going to be careful. So the activity that we're going to do for today, um, it is not an around the room activity. You can kind of tell there's not anything around the room. Um, I want everyone to get out a sheet of paper and put their name on it. And what we're going to do, I think we've done one like this before where I give you the little slips as a table and you do it and then you come and then you bring it back. So we're going to do the problems one by one. Um, you're going to work with your table, but you're going to write the work on your own sheet of paper so that you're showing that you did the work too. So you're going to do the problems as a group. And once you have agreed that you know what the right answer is, you're going to write the answer on the slip of paper. So slip of paper, you're going to write the answer on the slip of paper. And Margaret, if you wanted to join those other girls, you can. Unless you like working by yourself, which is fine too. Okay. So you're going to grab a slip of paper. You're going to do the problem on your own sheet of paper. You're going to transfer the answer to the slip of paper. Okay? And then you're going to bring it up to me, and if it's right, you get the next problem. So go ahead and nose goes. Have somebody come up and get the paper.